So as we're jumping into painting over this 3D render, uh, first off, in this case, we're going to uh, just desaturate this. And yeah, there's a couple of techniques that I'm just going to show you that I use quite often uh, just when I'm starting over the 3D base just to get rid of the 3D look or to at least assist in getting rid of it. So there is a plugin that you can buy called Acviz and there's just like the artwork section. There, there's a bigger kind of uh, software that you can buy but you just need this one called Art, uh, Artwork. And when I click that, it's gonna open up a pop-up window here. And basically this is some really dirty cheating here. Um, if I zoom in and use the hand tool here and just see we're getting a preview there. So you have your filters over here of how much you want to simplify, how big you want to make your brush strokes. So even that there is quite nice what we're getting the result. And then so let, let's say we uh, we got this so simplicity one um stroke curvature bring that down a little bit stroke intensity so depending on how intense you want those brush strokes but i think best practice overall when you're doing this stuff when you're kind of using these cheats and speeding it up is to use them delicately and sparingly because uh it can be a little bit obvious if you're just absolutely slapping this on. So if I if I just run that filter there, and now all of a sudden we have <laughs> a bit of an oil painting. Um, but if I just what I'll normally do though is I'll um, let me just make a duplicate of that, and now if I run the filter again and run on top of the the top layer what I would normally do is I'll mask it back in to the areas that are really 3D looking or that need a bit of assistance in breaking up the design which is kind of everywhere in a way but yeah um, like just particularly like edges and things like it's nice to use there like yeah like particularly those really hard tree geometry edges like it works very well for those and we can then combine that with our painting skills and overlaying photographs so yeah i'd um i just i'd go around the image and maybe just apply this into different places so that's one technique i think the filter i think it could be like a hundred euro so it, it is a bit pricey but it, it it's a time saver and i mean if you weigh up the cost of um running through all those images throughout your career uh, it does kind of pay for itself in the time that it might save you when you're trying to do this so you guys make that a uh, judgment call so yeah, that's that's one technique anyway, and uh, it's not the only one. So yeah, um, I'll just park that one for a moment. And then next up we have, now as well, it depends on the project you're on and how, I have another little breakdown uh, later on that we'll look at in uh, terms of, depending on the project, the, the level of painterliness versus how strong or realistic the 3D is, that'll depend on your project. So that's something you have to weigh up as well. So yeah, sometimes people will just apply a very, very slight Gaussian blur just to take away that sharpness of the 3D. Like just very slight, like 0 0.3 up to maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and then start painting into that. And you just, it, it just gives it, and you could even, you know, you could mask back in the sharp parts that maybe you'd like to keep. So that's another technique is just using a very, very slight Gaussian blur. And that particularly works well with more realistic pieces, uh, like real, really realistic renders. And then you also have, I'll just go back here. Cool. So yeah, then like you do have like a bunch of these filters. So like median, 
again let me uh, make a duplicate here you do have the median filter i use this one quite often and again that simplifies your detail that's particularly good when you're bringing in photographic detail so if we just pop that onto one it just does a nice level of simplification and getting rid of some of those really harsh textures like even that that works quite well again it's very subtle but just knocks back that harsh detail so let me close that and then we have we have a couple of these other filters in here and um, if you come into a bit i think it's filter gallery yeah like you have some of this other stuff like very <laughs> very dirty stuff here so yeah it's like the um the dry brush is one that you can try it kind of gives a cool effect and I was actually using this on a freelance project recently that um, it was going for this kind of graphic style and I was able to, this actually, I implemented this into my workflow along with painting on top. Uh, it worked really well for the style. So we'll try that there. So again, that would be another example there now. You, you could uh, turn on your, your mask and then paint that. Paint that back in. Well, actually, I need to invert it first. There we go. And yeah, you could uh, you could paint in that nice simplified detail. Works better in some places than others, and just gets rid of that realistic. Just it's nice, particularly there with the water. It really simplified that down, and the the rock face there. But it does give you a different result, as you can see there. So you could come in then with a nice uh, smudge brush or a mixer brush. So we have a mixer brush here. So you could come in with the mixer brush, say, and uh, clean up that detail if it wasn't working for you, or it just it kind of simplifies it there. So you have that mixer brush down here, 40, uh, 86 even. And then that's another one there that you could try. I'm actually on the eraser. Show me on the mixer brush. And that's another one as well. Yeah, just different types of results. Um, okay. And then one more filter that you can try. Coming back into filter gallery. And like, there's a bunch of them here that give lots of different results. So that's another one like paint dabs. That's really harsh. So you'd only want to be using maybe... Uh, it's a bit nasty now the result that gives, but... Yeah, depending on um, how far you want to push that, like, you know, that'd be nice for simplifying the, the mountains in the back, maybe. And you've palette knife as well. So, yeah, I, I mean, you could find something nice in these filters if you're, um, maybe if you don't want to use Acfiz. But again, I'd just use it sparingly. Like, yeah, a lot of them give nasty results. So, yeah, best best used in small amounts i would say okay so uh yeah i'll jump into uh, the paint over process now